Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, as you uh, heard, my name is Javier Cardenas. I am the director of the Barrow Concussion Network and the Barrow Concussion and Brain Injury Center here at Barrow Neurological Institute, St. Joseph's in Hospital and Medical Center. Um, first, I'd like to mention that uh, we are the only Joint Commission certified traumatic brain injury and spinal cord injury specialty hospital in the nation. This is actually something that came out just a few months ago, and naturally we're very proud uh, to have that designation. What we're talking about today is the state of concussion in Arizona. Uh, four years ago, almost to the day, I sat in front of you and we launched an initiative called Barrel Brain Book, the first concussion education program for Arizona high school athletes. Since then, we've had involvement at the NFL level, the NCAA level, and at the high school level that has really set the stage for the nation. Now, Arizona, of course, that sometimes can be poked fun of uh, for various things, whether it be politics or policy, but this is actually something that we can be very proud of. Now, to start, we'll start at the highest level, the NFL. Many of you are aware that the uh, head or the health and safety report was recently published and released and it mentioned that concussions were down 35 percent since 2012 and specifically concussions as a result of helmet to helmet collisions down 43 percent myself doctors kaibara and porter stand at the sidelines of every single professional game played at the university of arizona uh, i'm sorry the <laughs> university of phoenix stadium and uh, e even for the Pro Bowl and Super Bowl. Now this is something that's gone on for uh, now four years and new this year is the new spotter protocol. There is an athletic trainer that is in the video booth that is monitoring for injuries. If the athlete has not been taken off to the sidelines, that spotter can call a medical timeout. This is unprecedented because never in sports has there been an ability of a medical provider to actually call a timeout. And we're hoping that actually other organizations follow suit. In addition, coming up in October, there will be a coalition of specialists, including myself, that are going to Pittsburgh to talk about how to manage this injury. We've talked about education, prevention, but then what about management? And what are the centers of excellence that can really do that? Moving on to the NCAA level, new this year are policies. Every single member of the NCAA must have concussion policies that include education, include a history and physical that asks questions regarding concussion, includes um, policies for sideline evaluation, for return to play and return to learn, so the academics. Also, we're entering the third year of the TGen collaboration. This is between Arizona State University, uh, Barrow Neurological Institute, A.T. Steele University, uh, among others, in which we are looking for biomarkers that identify, number one, when an athlete has, identified, has sustained a concussion, and number two, when they've recovered from that concussion. This research is the holy grail of concussion diagnosis and return to play. In addition, we are entering our fourth year of the Sideline Neurological Assessment Program, or SNAP. SNAP is the equivalent of the uh, unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant at the NFL level. The Pac-12 has actually also started a uh, spotter program, although that spotter will not be able to uh, re call a medical timeout. However, they can notify a medical specialist on the sidelines when an athlete has been injured. High school, and this is where we can be most proud of the things that have been done in Arizona. The National Center for, Center for Catastrophic Injury reports that in the 2014 year, there were five deaths as a result of uh, high school play, direct high school play. This is down from eight the year prior. When it comes to concussions, uh, across the country, the rate of concussion is 27% for competition, 21% for practice, and that's in all sports. The number one, of course, being football. 
In the state of Arizona, we have set a number of policies through the Arizona Interscholastic Association that have been adopted nationwide. The first one in 2010 was a helmet dislodgement rule in which if an athlete loses their helmet or it becomes uh, dislodged, they must go to the sideline, uh, miss a play in order to have it inspected. The following year, the National Federation of High Schools and the NCAA adopted a similar rule. In 2013, we adopted a contact rule, and that contact rule stated that during the preseason football, uh, no more than half of the practice time could be contact, and during the regular season, no more than a third of the regular season could be contact. New this year from the National Federation of High Schools is a nationwide adoption of another Arizona initiative. Just last year, we voted to reduce the amount of uh, heading in practice to reduce exposure for the possibility of concussion. We're not eliminating heading, but we see this as another trend that people will follow um, around the nation. As I mentioned, um, the, the rates of uh, concussion that we have seen over the last uh, several years have doubled. We feel that this is because of uh, increased awareness uh, and increased knowledge about this injury and in that more uh, of their parents are taking them to the ER and to the appropriate providers. We'd also like to talk about where we're at four years later from Barrel Brain Book. And in fact, you guys will get a little bit of a sneak peek to the new version of Barrel Brain Book, which will be launched shortly. To my left, you can see that this is what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to be looking at for the newest version of Barrel Brain Book, in which an athlete can select an avatar and really move through the program. Um, the next slide. This is how the athletes will be able to maneuver through this with signs and symptoms of concussion, what to do, how to address a concussion, in really more of a Pinterest fashion. It will be available from uh, desktop, mobile devices, uh, including phones, and once again setting the stage for um, what, is, what is happening. In addition to the Barrel Brain Book education for high school athletes, we have baseline testing, which we have offered to every single high school athlete in the state of Arizona in which there is an athletic trainer. Athletic trainers are key to preventing injury. Last year, over 58,000 baseline tests were performed and 8,500 post-injury tests. As I mentioned, we're on the sidelines at the NFL and the NCAA level. The question is, how do you get experts, how do you get concussion specialists on the sidelines of high school sports? Now you may ask, well, how does this all, how does this matter and why does this matter to our athletes? And it matters because we are able to provide the same kind of care that professional athletes get, which is not available anywhere else in the country. Now to my right is a young man, his name is Rudy Ayala. Rudy has been a part of this program. He received concussion education through Barrow Brain Book. He received uh, baseline testing, and his athletic trainer at Tempe High School is part of the Barrow Concussion Network, and originally provided a consultation through that service, and later on he came to the clinic. Uh, he suffered from a number of symptoms related to his injury, including headaches and vision changes. Uh, but I'm going to let him tell you about that uh, and his uh, courageous year. Ready? Um, hello, to everyone. Um, I was in practice, um, getting ready for a game t tomorrow, that later day. I was in, um, we are doing tackling drills, three on three on each side. One person had to hold the ball, and the other person had to tackle. So I went for the ball carrier. Um, I went helmet to his body. I got more of the impact. I almost fell down. My, I lost my vision, my hearing, my balance. I told my coach, may I go to the trainer? She, he said right away, go, go see um, the trainer. I went to, I, me and my, uh, one of my teammates offered to help me. I was um, losing balance the whole time walking. I got to the trainer, she told me to take all my gear off. 
She did. She ran some tests on me. She said, "Name, go to one to five. How bad is your head hurt?" I said, five. Can you stand?" I just toppled down. She called the um, paramedics, rushed me right to the hospital. And the next day, I visit Dr. Cardenas. And how have you done since then? Right? I've been still battling um, headaches and my speech. Have you returned to school? Yes, sir. But you're doing much better than 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 when you had the injury. Yes. Rudy, do you mind if I ask how 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 afraid were you in that moment? How how scary of a moment was that for you? Did you know what was going on? Um, I was very scared. Half the time, I didn't know what was going on. So, what's also critically important uh, in Rudy's experience is the fact that an athletic trainer was available at his school. Athletic trainers are the boots on the ground. They are the most important healthcare professional um, that an athlete can have. They're available at all professional levels, whether it be the NFL, the NHL, Major League Baseball, NBA. They're at all the Division I NCAA schools. And it really is important that they be present at all high school athletics. In the state of Arizona, about 60% of schools have athletic trainers. There's a 40% gap. And that is a significant problem. It's a problem that we as an organization tried to tackle uh, last year when in collaboration with the AIA and the Athletic Trainers Association in Arizona decided that our goal is in 10 years to have athletic trainers at every high school. As a part of that goal, we applied for a grant through the uh, Arizona Super Bowl Host Committee in which we wanted to have 4,000 sports covered, sports events covered. And not just football and not just contact sports, but all sports. And what we were hoping also to do was to cover 20,000 athletes. At the end of the year, we were able to cover over 5,700 athletic events over 27,000 Arizona high school athletes, and we did it with just 55,000 of that $150,000. This is clearly something that we can do and something that we're going to carry forward. It is a boost to get every athletic trainer, uh, to get an athletic trainer in every high school. Um, we'll go ahead and, and take questions. I'd also like to mention that uh, Mr. Harold Slummer, the executive IA, uh, is here. These programs truly require collaboration. They require collaboration with state organizations like the AIA, who at times has actually risked membership of the NFHS with these policies, has set the stage for, um, for other uh, state associations around the country. Collaborations with the Arizona Cardinals, with Arizona State University, uh, as well as AT Still. Um, we're very proud of it, and we're very proud to be uh, Arizonans and have these initiatives. And with that, I'll be happy to take questions. Doc, I don't know if you can do it with that brain that you have in front of you, but for the layman, can you explain what happens to the brain with a concussion? Absolutely. Just so somebody can have an idea. Okay. So, when a concussion occurs, There's a force applied to the head, or actually to the body, and that force can be transmitted to the skull. And when that happens, the brain moves within the skull, and it causes a disruption in the function of the brain. And what happens on a microscopic level is those nerve cells are dumping these transmitters, and they don't function very well afterwards. And while the rest of the brain is trying to clean it up is when people are having symptoms. And we know that the metabolic needs of the brain in the, in the following days and weeks are this, create this period of vulnerability. And this is critically important. The most important thing is that an athlete does not sustain a second injury before completely recovering from their first. When that happens, they can suffer bleeding of the brain, swelling of the brain, death and disability. As we had mentioned earlier in the press conference, five last year, there should be none. 
Um, this period of vulnerability is critically important to make sure that the athlete has a complete recovery. Once they have a complete reco recovery, they should be at no greater risk for further injury should they sustain another concussion. Yes, sir. In Spanish. In Spanish. Uh, los comisiones, um, cuando tiene un golpe de la cabeza, el cerebro puede mover um, en la cabeza y puede causar síntomas como dolor de la cabeza, desmayo y um, problemas con um, uh, memoria. Y durante este tiempo después de un golpe de la cabeza, después de una conmoción, tiene un riesgo, riesgo de uh, sangrado de la cabeza, de hinchado de cerebro, y a veces hay unas personas que se mueren de este um, golpe. Por eso es muy, import muy importante, después de un golpe de la cabeza, que los um, atléticos um, se mejoren uh, todo antes de regresar a los deportes. Anybody want Italian or French? <laughs> just kidding. And you I don't, speak I don't, that too. No, I do not. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, can you break down how this is? It, it's impressive what you're you're covering, and the NFL is paying for through grants. Can you break down the grants? I don't know if that would be a good question for you or for they. Sure. So for clarification for our programs, um, the the grants obtained um, come from various sources. The athletic training program is uh, a grant we got from the uh, Super Bowl host committee. Um, there are grants directly from the NFL in which they contribute $25,000 uh, and the club matches $25,000, a total of $50,000 for uh, the athletic training programs. The educational programs, the baseline testing programs are grants we've received from other uh, organizations for various reasons, whether it be the Fiesta Bowl or um, um, the Board of Visitors, uh, other other organizations that provide these services specifically for our Arizona high school athletes. Rudy, can you talk about uh, how you feel now going back? It's uh, what year are you now? I'm a junior in high school. You're a junior. So are you going to play football? And if no, so, why no, not? Um, first time I, after I was released from the hospital. My my fellow coaches asked me, "Can you go to one of our games?" And I sat I sat on the sidelines. Every time I see my friends play, I get scared. I, I do not want to go back. Like I'm nervous to put my gear on and everything. I won't. I can't go near the field. I'm too terrified. Sitting here with Dr. Cardenas and hearing some of the changes that are coming, um, you know that this is going to impact your classmates who are going back to play the game. Yes. Uh, what do you think when you hear this? I think it's very um, helping to us, and we'll be more aware of what our symptoms are. If you were here at Barrow as a doctor, what would you tell them? You know what you really need out there? You need this. Have you have you thought of anything to tell them? Um, really kind of like if you were president, what would you do to rule the world? What would you do to rule out there on the football field to protect um, your fellow athletes? I would do... I really thought about it, yeah. I put you on the spot, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As we said, we're, we're really happy and proud that we can offer uh, the same services that we offer professional and college athletes to our Arizona high school athletes. Um, it's it's really something that um, that through the collaborations that uh, um, there really isn't anything like that. Doesn't mean that we're stopping either. So the question is, what about youth? Right? What about Pop Warner? What about um, um, you know the, the heads up football programs which actually have reduced a number of injuries as well a 70 percent decrease in overall injuries and 36 percent decrease in concussions specifically through the heads up program our role of course is education and we actually have uh, education in the form of uh, a video game barrel brain ball which we launched a few years ago um, and uh, that is how we are trying to address this at the youth level it's more of a challenge of course because they're the organizations uh, at the youth level are, are less uh, well organized as a group. There's a, a lot of them, but we're trying. What's the major pushback you're getting from the high schools or the AIA is getting back from the high schools that are holdouts on this? Just funding or? Holdouts for the athletic trainers? Right. 
So um, the, one of the biggest challenges for having an athletic trainer is indeed funding. Um, uh, there are others, uh, and that is a challenge for all schools at all levels, uh, whether it be uh, you know, teacher funding, uh, funding for uh, athletic activities, and so obviously we would, we would ask those schools to really prioritize this issue in order to keep their athletes safe. If they're willing to have uh, an athletic program, they should be willing to have an athletic trainer uh, to keep the kids safe. How much does it cost to have a trainer at one school, each school average? The average athletic trainer uh, is, is roughly, it receives roughly that of a teacher's salary. Where do you use to get Spanish? A little bit. And then, what's the experience If you're comfortable with it, if you. No? <laughs> Don't <Okay>. worry. <laughs> That's right. Don't worry about it. You can tell me about his story in Spanish. Okay. Pues uh, Rudy uh, sufrió de un, un, un conmoción uh, cuando estaba jugando fútbol y después tuvo mucho dolor de la cabeza, desmayo, cambios en la vista y con su, su trainer um, uh, tuvo una evaluación y tuvo que ir al hospital para, para chequear el cerebro y el día después um, fue a mi clínica para chequear para los síntomas y para tratar. Y después de un año, uh, no va a regresar a, a, a jugar fútbol americano, um, pero puede hacer todas las cosas en, en las clases y, um, y todo de, 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 afuera de las clases. Uh, Rudy, can you talk a bit about um, when you thought about getting into football and when now you hear other younger kids want to get into football, what do you tell them? I tell them, always be aware. If you feel, feel any headaches or anything, go talk to your coach, talk to a trainer, get checked out, never hesitate. Don't be scared. What's been interesting over the last four years is that we've seen more athletes reporting their concussions, but also more of their teammates who are reporting it in their, uh, in their, in their fellow athletes, uh, which was a, a pleasant surprise. We've also found that our athletes in the state of Arizona are better educated than parents regarding concussion. When they come into the clinic, we ask them signs, symptoms, they identify them, they know the process, they, they know the drill now. Um, one day in the future, these programs won't be needed, uh, but right now they are. Doctor, I got a question for you. Um, yes. You know, in the old days, there was, especially with high school football, there was a lot of machismo going on, you know, between coaches and players. How have you seen that kind of break down? Is it broken down quite a bit, or is there still a ways to go as far as uh, softening that machismo attitude? We've seen a change in culture. And that change in culture is actually most apparent at the NFL level. We see athletes who, when they come to the sidelines and we approach them, they know what to expect. We see athletes uh, who are self-reporting. Uh, we see athletes who, who let people know even if they don't have symptoms right away. Uh, that is not as apparent at the NCAA and the high school level, but it's coming. Uh, we see significant changes, especially in our youth who have gone through these programs. But we see um, uh, coaches who are hands-off when it comes to the medical issues. We see athletic trainers uh, feeling more comfortable in their decision-making and, and removing an athlete from play. Of course, the mantra is, when in doubt, sit them out. Uh, and we see that the attitudes of athletes has changed because they want to play not just tonight, not just this weekend, but also next year and the year following and have an opportunity to play at the college or professional level. Do you credit the NFL as being responsible for helping to break that down and influence the lower leagues? Clearly, uh, the protocols and policy that has been instituted at the NFL level has trickled down uh, and has had definitely a, a positive uh, effect on, um, on the youth uh, in our country. 
Rudy, uh, do you or will you play other sports now that you're done playing football? Yes, I will start playing football this following year. You will play football. So you are going back to football. I mean, baseball, sorry. You might just start over because I got to hear a full sentence beginning my um, I will start playing baseball this following year. What position do you hope to play? I will play outfield, right field. And have you decided whether or not you want to go to college and what you want to do uh, with your adult life? I would like to, um, in my college years, I want to be a study, be a police officer. Why, why are you attracted to that profession? Because I, I want to help people make a difference in our community. Did you, can you describe just a little bit about how you were doing academically and how your whole just feeling of well-being was before you had the concussion and then yeah, we know how you felt afterward, you gave us that, but before that, but then how did you feel once you went through Barrow and had recuperated? Do you feel fully recuperated? Um, a little bit. Okay, so starting from what, how did you feel before and now how do you feel? Before I felt was... Um, I went through my schooling normally. Now, after I went to Barrow, I feel more comfortable in school. Most of my headaches are not um, hurting that much before. It's just I'm still struggling and just my academics a little bit. Were you struggling with academics before? the? the I'm trying to get the balance of how you were you know, the measure of where you were on a scale of 1 to 10 to, you know, the doctor's question, how's your pain, 1 to 10? So where were you before you got the concussion Bef and now after and you've gone through treatment? Before I was a straight A student, then um, I had a little bit of, really not that much trouble in before this injury. Now how is it at school? Now, I'm, now my studies are slowing down. I've been taking more breaks in schooling and uh, getting back to my normal life and just this uh, injury really changed my life. When you're sitting there, I know you've been kind of coached at how, you know, what to say and all that, but just relax. We're not going to eat you up. We just want to get from you. You know, you're, you're a high school student who just wants to get back to school and get back to normal. You're sitting there in school, what are some of the things? My kid struggles with math right now. He's smart, so I'm wondering, what is it you're sitting there struggling with? School started this week already, or when did yes, it start? Yes, I started two weeks ago. So uh, what is it that you're hitting now and going, I know how to do this, what's wrong? What, um, well, I know what it is. My math, my okay. math I'm struggling with. Okay, so give us, a, give us kind of a slice of what it's like the other day, what was happening. Did it hit um, you? It hit me right in the middle of class. Um, um, Describe what you were doing. This is radio. These guys are television. They're, they'll get it out of you too. But I want it for radio. Just describe what it's like to sit in your seat at class and you're going through this and that frustration. Give us a look. It's at um, different than not having an injury. It's really more. Um, um, I can't really explain it. It's kind of hard. Like, were you sitting? Do you do math on certain days of the week or I every do, day of the week? I, I do every day. And is it math or English or what is it you're struggling with the most right math now? Math and reading. When I, reading, what's that like? When I read, like I stop and struggle, like I cannot pronounce simple words. And uh, when it comes to big words, I can pronounce them um, normally, but when it comes to small words, I cannot pronounce them that much. Like I just, I mess up on most of the um, sounds in the words. Things you used to know easily. Yes. Doc, is this typical for uh, a concussion injury, or is this extreme? Uh, it is not typical. So when it comes to concussion, 98% uh, of people who sustain a concussion have a 100% recovery. Those who don't, um, uh, that 2%, it's usually because they've gone back too soon and they suffered that second injury, and they have uh, continued problems. Now, as you've seen here, every brain heals differently. The average recovery for a high school athlete is 14 to 21 days, but some people take longer. And of course, we don't put them in harm's way until they are fully recovered. Um, we, of course, are going to continue to to treat Rudy and address these symptoms and get him to the point of a full recovery. So you're expecting full recovery? Yes, we are. And would it suggest that he had a second concussion? 
would, would any of this suggest, suggest that he may have had a previous concussion before? Uh, no, unless no. Rudy's not telling me something. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I just, I just no. know based no, there on the amount of his severity of, of no, issues. Every, yeah, as, as we mentioned, the, um, uh, in, in whether it's the severity, prolongation, there are other factors um, that can play a role into a recovery. So, for example, when we, when we look at somebody who's taken longer to recover than normal from a concussion, we look at four things in general. Um, the first is whether or not the injury was worse than a concussion, right? Does there, is there any evidence of a bleed or any evidence of microscopic hemorrhage? And we have the technology, uh, MRI technology, to do that. The second question, is there a physical symptom that's prolonging recovery, the most common being post-concussive headaches? Um, the third is, is there an emotional component to the recovery? And we know that in adolescence that it's a very emotional period. And then the last is, did the concussion worsen something that was already there? We know that there are... Question. Um, you mentioned that being on the sidelines uh, for the football game, you, you were scared. What, if anything, do you miss about playing football? I miss being with my friends, talking about how we can improve, and um, like, I just miss riding with them. We always talk about every game. We always pray for everyone to come out of the game safe. Everything. I miss being in the locker room and talking to all my friends. You pray when you're heading yeah. into the game. Yeah, we pray every day before we go in. We always we pray for five minutes. We ask coach, or our coaches, can we have some private time? We just talk about stay safe out there. Everyone come home. Everyone come in safe and that's it every day for games it's that dangerous and you guys are aware of it yes Thank you very much. Oh, any further questions? Um, uh, it has natural stoppages of play, uh, whether it's a play that ends or a turnover or whatever that may be. Um, soccer is very difficult, uh, and our experience with uh, soccer at, at all, all levels, including the professional level, which is something that we do with the Arizona United team. Um, as you know, in professional soccer, um, when you remove a player from play, they can actually be penalized for a substitution. And so it is a challenge at that level to, to perform an evaluation at the sideline, um, given the, um, the rules of play. And we hope that some of those rules change. Actually, at the NCAA level, there is a special concussion substitution that you can do because this is an issue. Not so much an issue at the high school level because you can have unlimited substitutions. But clearly, as we've seen this summer uh, and two years ago in both uh, World Cup games, uh, concussion evaluations or the lack thereof uh, are a challenge. Not a neurologist on the NFL